Now let's talk about how we're going to manage fetal heart rate decelerations. So in the previous slides, we talked about the different types of fetal heart rate decelerations. Now let's talk about what we do about them. So we have different categories of tracings, category 1 being mild, category 2 being moderate, and category 3 being very severe. So what does category 1 mean? It means you have a heart rate between 110 to 160 for the fetus. Remember, we talked about how this is the normal range, much higher than normal for adults, this is normal for a fetus, and moderate baseline fetal heart rate variability. Remember, we mentioned before that fetal heart rate is variable. It goes a little up and a little down within a range of 10, so it's okay for there to be some variability at baseline, and you want that actually. We also want there to be no late or variable decelerations. You want this to not be there at all. Very, very, very important. If you have later variable decelerations, it's not a benign tracing, so you need to be wary about these. You can have early decelerations. Remember, we talked about how early decelerations are very normal and not problematic, so they can be present or absent to be considered a Category 1 tracing. And a Category 1 tracing means that it's benign. And accelerations also can be present or absent. You don't have to have an acceleration for a normal tracing. So what does this mean? This is normal. No metabolic acidosis or hypoxia. So if you have a Category 1 tracing with these criteria met, this is a normal tracing and you have no problems with the fetus and you can keep on monitoring and not have to do any kind of intervention. Now let's talk about a Category 3 tracing. A Category 2 tracing kind of overlaps between Category 1 and Category 3. Now let's talk about what Category 3 is. There's no fetal heart rate variability, which is bad like we mentioned. If there's no variability, that means there's some kind of problem with the heart. And it's also with either recurrent late decelerations or recurrent variable decelerations. So if you have no fetal heart rate variability with either of these, you're a Category 3 tracing, and this is very, very severe. Also, a sinusoidal pattern, like we mentioned before, is also very problematic. This means that something really serious is wrong with the heart of the child, and something needs to be done, and intervention is needed. This is called an abnormal tracing. It's a high risk of hypoxia and acidemia. Because of these risk factors of hypoxia and acidemia, there needs to be a workup. So if you have either no fetal heart rate variability with either of these or a sinusoidal pattern, this is considered an abnormal tracing and can lead to CNS damage from hypoxia and even cerebral palsy, which are nerve and muscle problems associated with lack of oxygen to the fetus. And category 2 tracings are variations not included. So there are a lot of variations that are found between categories 1 and 3. And we'll talk about what those mean when we do some examples on the next slide. So now further management. Resuscitation for Category 2 and 3 tracings. The goal is to increase perfusion and oxygenation. So even with Category 2, we're going to do this as well because there's a risk of hypoxia, and we don't want any hypoxia in our baby. So you can reposition to the side, so it's the left or to the right. So the reason why this will help is that this will shift the uterus to one side and help the blood flow be a little more stable to the placenta. So if you move the patient to the side, the uterus isn't compressing downward with gravity, and you can open up the blood flow. So you have decreased cord compression and increased placental blood flow as a result of the repositioning. So remember, that's what we want. We want more placental blood flow because a late deceleration and recurrent variable deceleration are all signs of major placental blood flow deficiencies. Also, oxygen via face mask. Remember, we're trying to prevent hypoxia, right? So you want to increase oxygenation. How are you going to do that? Give oxygen. So giving oxygen to the mother will help to be higher oxygen concentrations to go to the baby eventually. IV fluid bolus, why will this help? Because we'll give the mom more fluids. If you have more fluids, you have more blood flow, and more blood flow means more oxygen to the fetus. Stop uterotonic drugs, like oxytocin. Oxytocin can cause further contractions of the uterus, and when the uterus is contracted, it can diminish placental blood flow, especially when there are recurrent variable or late decelerations. So you need to stop any uterotonic drugs to stop this compression from happening and increase blood flow. And say you stop oxytocin and there's still problems with hypoxia, you can give a tocolytic, which means a stopping of contraction drug, like terbutaline, which is a beta-2 agonist. And finally, if there's oligohydramnios, and that's the reason why the baby is having problems, you can give an amnio infusion, where you infuse the, the uh, uterus with amniotic fluid to help the baby. One thing you might see on your tests, on US Emily style questions, are scalp pH testing as an answer choice. Never pick it. That's not a thing that's used anymore. So here's some alternate scenarios in Category 2. We talked about Category 1 and Category 3. Here's some Category 2 scenarios. So late decelerations by itself. It doesn't have to be recurrent. 
It doesn't have to be with, well, it can be recurrent. It can be moderate late decelerations, but it's not with the no fetal heart rate variability. If you see late decelerations by itself, you need to do all this in utero resuscitation. All right, and this is category two. And you test with scalp, scalp stimulation for accelerations. And what that means is you stimulate the scalp of the baby and look to see if there's at least a 15 beat per minute rise in heart rate for at least 15 seconds. And we talked about what scalp stimulation is. If you have fetal tachycardia, if it's less than 200 beats per minute, it's benign. But if it's greater than 200 beats per minute, it's probably major, major problems. So causing a maternal infection like chorioamnionitis or rapidly decreased blood flow to the fetus. So anything that causes decreased blood flow will cause the uh, baroreceptor reflex to activate and also maternal infection can cause it. And in these situations, if it's greater than 200, you will resuscitate as you saw above. And variable decelerations are usually benign unless they're recurrent. So you have a couple of variable decelerations, you actually don't need to do anything. But if you have a lot of variable decelerations, you have to do the resuscitation that we talked about just now. Now let's do another practice question. This will be thinking further um, regarding the topics we just talked about. What is the next step in management? So what we're looking for is the next step. Cesarean section, vaginal delivery, fetal scalp pH testing, ultrasound, or reassurance. So a 37-year-old G2P1 is in the active phase of labor and has external fetal monitoring in place. The pregnancy was proceeding normally until new onset of recurrent variable decelerations and minimal variability. So we talked about this. This is not a good sign, right? So we have recurrent variable decelerations. Emergency measures are taken and patients moved to her side, given IV fluids, and placed on face mask oxygen. Remember, we talked about those are the criteria that you need to meet to stabilize the patient. You need to move her, give her fluids, give oxygen to try and help as much as possible. But these recurrent variable decelerations persist, and terbutaline doesn't solve the issue either. So the nurse asks you, the resident, what should be done now? So now we need to decide what's going on. This patient's having a major problem. There's recurrent variable decelerations, which are a sign of hypoxia to the infant. And even terbutaline didn't help. So what do you want to do here? Is a cesarean section a good idea? Yeah, you could potentially do that. Remember, this patient's having major hypoxia and possibly dying, the baby. So you need to do something emergently to help. So we'll hold on to C-section. Vaginal delivery. Is it a good idea to go through a vaginal delivery when you're already having so many problems with the baby being inside the uterus? Definitely not. So definitely B will be wrong. How about a fetal scalp pH testing? Is that going to help? No, we mentioned that you never do fetal scalp pH testing anymore, so never do that. And reassurance is ridiculous because this baby is dying. We talked about persistent recurrent variable decelerations being a sign of hypoxia and acidosis. Ultrasound or C-section? Do we have time for an ultrasound right now? Is that really going to change our management? No, we already know the baby's hypoxic, so C-section will be our best answer, okay? The best answer is C-section because the baby is in active hypoxia and acidosis, and the only way to treat this is to deliver immediately. And the fastest method of delivering is C-section. If you give oxytocin and enhance the vaginal delivery, you could worsen these decelerations by contracting the uterus further.